Hey guys, Cameron Sisk here. Uh, just got it done with a lesson here with poor Zach Golf. Um, got my ASU bag here, Arizona State Golf. We're going into my senior year. Uh, I'm just going to take you guys through a little what's in the bag. Uh, I'm sure people, some, some people are interested in seeing what's in here. And I'm just going to give you guys some tips for your golf game as well. Just make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks. All right, guys, I'm going to start my wedges here. Um, so I got the TaylorMade milled grind wedges, 52, 56, and 60. Um, you know, I go through a set of wedges probably once every eight-ish months uh, just from, you know, overuse. The gro grooves get a little worn. Um, so got to keep fresh grooves on the wedges. Um, so for me, especially with my wedge play, um, I'm never really hitting full wedge shots. Um, I think that's huge. Uh, spin control is huge, especially when you're playing harder courses, faster greens, uh, with lots of slope. So to be a good wedge player, you have to have dis distance control and be able to flight your wedges, take yardage off. Um, and that's something I'm pretty good at. Um, so, you know, for me, I think the longer the ball is in the air, especially with wedges, I mean, the more things that can happen to it. So I, I like, you know, in a way, I feel like I'm throwing darts. That's kind of a mentality that I have with my wedges. Um, so I have a five yard off swing and a 10 yard off swing. And I obviously have a full, full swing, but those are some of the references that I have. So if I have, say, 90 yards and I hit my 56 degree, um, 100 yards, you know, I'm obviously gonna go reference that 10 yard off swing to 90 yards and then I'll obviously read wind and lie and you know play those things into it but you know I'll show you what it looks like it's nothing special but you know make sure your chest keeps moving through the ball I kind of play in the back half of my stance and this is like a 90 yard shot with a 56 degree So my, my 60 degree goes about 91, 92 yards. That's obviously a full swing, which I'm usually not making. 56 goes about 105, 104. 52 goes about 118. Um, irons, so I've had the same set of irons um, for a while now. Uh, I've been through a couple sets of these, the P760s. Um, you know, I, I've had a lot of success with them. I used to have the 770, 750 combo set, and this is obviously kind of the in-between. Um, but yeah, I've had a lot of success with these. Yeah, so I'm standard, standard loft, standard lie, standard length, um, six feet. Yeah, so it, I mean, a lot of that stuff could depend on your swing path, and, but um, you know, like you could be my height and have a steep swing and be two degrees up, so it's not all depending off how high you are and you know, how low your hands and how high your hands are to dress it. Everything plays into that. So it's not, you know, six feet auto, automatically um, standard lie. So, but yeah, I got the Z cord grips on all my clubs as well. I've had these for probably three or four years. I tend to have a little bit of sweaty hands. So these kind of keep it a little rougher. Yeah, I probably do my grips about once every four months, four or five months, um, especially cord grips, they get dry really fast. So I have the NS Pro Nippon Modest 3 shafts. I think they're extra stiff, um, probably about 100, 2 or 130, so that means 130 grams. Um, and I've had these shafts, I think, for about two years. I don't know a ton about iron shafts, but, you know, it's something that I got fitted into, and I, they perform well for me. So, um, you know, right now, a swing thought for me. Um, I just, you know, finished up a lesson with Adam just kind of tightening up some things, but to really keep my hands going straight back in the takeaway, that's always been a key for me to where I can turn around the ball and get to a solid position at the top. Um, and being able to come from the inside and just rip through the ball and knowing that that ball is going to start on line is huge for me too. A lot of uh, club face control is uh, helped with that. So I'll hit one here. My hands, kind of a rehearsal here for me, is just my hands kind of going straight back like that so I can feel that when I actually swing the golf club and getting to the top and just ripping through it.
My lowest personal round is 59 at Steel Canyon. Um, I was actually playing in a five summon in skins game. Really fun group that day. Uh, I did it two days after my 18th birthday. Um, so that was kind of special. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty magical round, I'd say. So this is par 71, so it was 12 under. 12 under. Um, I shot 29 on the front, uh, which is a par 35, so I was six under on the front. And I didn't think at the time that I could, so I made the turn to the Ranch 9 at Seal Canyon, and I didn't think that I could do it after I parred one and two, which would be my 10th and 11th hole, because those are the two easier holes on that side. But I ended up birdieing three, four, which are two harder holes, and eagling five, par five. So at that time, I was 10 under with two more holes to play. Actually, you know, I think I shot five under at the front, so I was nine under with four more holes to play. And I birdied um, my 15th hole and 17 and 18. So it was pretty cool. I hit it to a foot on 17, tapped in for bird, and then had to get up and down from over the green on 18 and you know hit my chip to about six inches and just tapped in so that was pretty stress-free 59 i'd say yeah i don't i don't really know it was kind of it seems like i should have been nervous but you know since it was my home course and i just you know i play there a lot it it didn't seem i don't know everything just seemed really easy that day you know and when when you're playing golf like that and it seems easy you really have to take advantage of it um, you can't protect like it. That's a, what, what good players do, um, especially on the PGA Tour. You'll see guys that are having good days. They don't slow down. They don't. They keep the foot on the gas and you know try to take it as deep as possible. I think I have two 65s. One at Mirabel when I won the Maui Gym in 2019. Uh, that's a course up in Scottsdale, and. The week after, I shot 65 at Trinity Forest, where I finished third. Um, I, I, I might have a 64, but I think it's 65. I mean, really, when you have those rounds, you just have to putt well. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of guys are going to hit it well, especially in college. And then when you get on, um, you know, in professional golf, everyone's going to hit it well. I'm sure you're going to have days where you don't hit it well, but the guys that are on top of the leaderboard are making putts. Um, you know, that's, that's all there is to it. You know, you got to have your short game short game there to bail you out when you need it um you know you know having a, a good ball striking day but you have to roll it so what i have here is a sim 2 hybrid um i used to have a three iron in the bag um, but i noticed um, i wasn't able to stop shots especially like when you have a par five or something like that you know 240 yards and kind of a shallow green you need something to stop fast you kind of this club is really good for that because it, it creates more spin and more height and i can still hit the lower stinger shots like i do with the three iron but i also have that extra gear where i can get it actually 240 ish yards 245 yards when i need to where the th three iron i would kind of have to smash it really and then it would come in super hot and low and not be able to necessarily hold greens like i'd like to so this kind of is a, a really good club. Um, I hit it a lot, a lot of tees sometimes, um, but really for for second shots into par fives, and even you'll come across like a 230, 40 yard par three every now and then. Um, and this is just a really, um, really ideal club to have in the bag. Uh, I think you know four or five tailor-made guys on the PJ Tour went to hybrids this past couple of years, and they haven't taken them out of their bags. And I see why now. It's uh, it's a great club to have. Um, in all areas, in all courses. It's about as solid as I could hit it there. All right, so three wood here. Um, I have the same shafts in my three wood end driver, obviously different weighting, but it's the 10 Psi Orange. Um, they're both tipped and extra stiff, which means there's a little bit shorter here to make the shaft a little bit stiffer, but they're a little lighter weight. So I got 70 grams in my three wood and 60 grams in my driver. Three woods are a little tough club to find, that to hit well really, especially with the good players. Um, it's, it's a really sensitive club in the bag. 
Uh, you got to find something that you could hit off the tee well, hit off, you know, hit off the fairway well. Uh, this, I would say this is kind of a hotter three wood. Like this thing goes pretty far. Some guys, you know, like Victor Holland, for example, has like a four wood in the bag to where it doesn't go quite as far, but it goes high and soft, like into, into greens. But this club, I do hit off the tee quite a bit. Um, sometimes I can even get this thing pretty close to my driver. So it's a hotter face, a uh, little bit less spin, but I've had a lot of success with it. And it's probably going to stay in the bag for a while because, like I said, it's hard to find really good three woods that you love. Um, and this one does it for me. I'll have one more. Uh, last but not least, the driver. Uh, like I said, I got the same shaft. Um, I did try the Sim 2 when it came out. Um, I do love the shape of the Sim 2 with the head. I think it, honestly, I think it looks better than the Sim. Uh, but I do like the face on this one, the feel of it. It's just a little more muted. Um, the dispersion on this driver for me is a little tighter. So that's why I quite, I haven't put the Sim 2 into the bag. Um, what lot you got on there? I got a nine degree. Everything's standard. I don't mess with any sort of lofts with the lower or higher. Um, one thing for me too is uh, swing thought with the driver. Me and Adam were just working on that. It's just finishing your backswing. Um, I think that's one thing when guys step up to the tee, they're a little nervous. Uh, they don't just kind of want the shot to be over with. Uh, but just really get a good swing thought. For me, it's finishing my backswing to where my chest is connected to my hands and really getting my chest turned to the top. Uh, to where I, again, like with the irons, just rip through the ball and know it's going to start on line. Uh, so I'll hit one for you here. So my chest is going to continuously turn to the top. And one thing, what happens when it does not, there's extra arm movement and length of swing at the top to where it messes up your timing and you could, you know, hit it both ways, either the left or right. So chest turned all the way to the top, finish your back swing and rip through it. about as good as it gets. Yeah, I would say my, you know, I'm not the longest guy in the, in the world. Uh, I would say pretty average when it comes to college golf. Uh, I'd say it's swinging about 112, 13 consistently. Uh, ball speed ends up being right around 170. So nothing crazy, um, but you know, my game revolves around being in the fairway and hitting greens. So, you know, that's what does it for me. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you what I got inside the bag. Um, so, obviously, ASU logo here. Titleist, they're great to us. Um, it's a privilege to play the Pro V1. Titleist has supported ASU for several years, and it's a great ball. <clears throat> obviously, the Titleist glove as well. They make a great, soft, good. Um, big pocket here. Got this thing here. Yardage book cover. Everyone on the team has one. I got my name. It's pretty cool. It says Forkham on top. Kind of faded. Uh, but yeah, the Sun Devil stick is out of your pocket. You might see John Rahm carrying this. He's got the same exact one, which is kind of neat. I got the Porzak putting plate here. Um, you know, I use this when I practice. I also have something called the dub line. It's a string. A lot of people know what the string is, it hovers above the ball. Um, this one's unique because it has two lines to where you know exactly if your eyes are over the ball and if it's on the center of the ball. So I use that more for breaking putts, really seeing the line well. Obviously you have sunscreen, you got to protect your skin, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So guys, last but not least, the putter. Um, spider, I think they make a great putter. I've been through about two of the Spider TP Reds, um, and then I went to this one right before I won my first college tournament actually. And I bounced around here and there, but this has stayed in the bag pretty much most of the last two years. Um, unique here, I got the T-line, something that just visually looks good to me. Um, I always will have a putter that where a line will come up to the ball. You know, you see a lot of blades and stuff where the line will come up to, you know, say he or something, and they have the, 
the plumber's neck and the top line of the, the Scotty Cameron or whatever. But I'll always have some sort of mallet with the line going up. I like the T. Just a, it's a good visual for me. Not not for everyone. Um, and then kind of a cool look here. I got the fork I'm here. Yeah. So this is a. Uh, about 34 inches and like a quarter um, and I'll always have some sort of mid-size uh, mid-size cord grip some I got somewhat big hands so it's kind of fills it out a little bit for me yep and that's it that's a what's in the bag for Cameron Sisk and if you guys have any questions or comments for me just leave them below and uh, make sure to like comment and subscribe thank you